Hi guys, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at my tarp and bivy system. I'll be showing you around the Rab Uni Shelter Classic Bivy and how I've set up and how I pitched the DD Super Light Tarp S. If any of you guys use a tarp and bivy setup as well, please let me know in the comments below. I'd be interested to know which particular items you use. But next, I'm going to show you how I set all this up. So the tarp that I use is the DD Super Light Tarp S. Weighs in at 240 grams, that excludes the pegs and the guy lines. The pack size is really small, but it's perfect for a one man bivy setup. I've made a couple of little modifications for the setup that I use. So let's get it laid out and I'll show you how I set it up. Get a couple of stakes in to stop it blowing away. So although it's lightweight and packs really small, it's a pretty big tarp. Easily covers me. And at nine feet by five feet, it's a perfect bit of kit for one person. So I've added some extra little tie out points. So these line locks and a little bit of Dyneema. There's one in the center on either end. I've got two of these along the back face, which are one tie out point in from the corner and then one on each corner on the front. And then right in the center at the front, I've just got a little loop here for my trekking pole. So the trekking poles that I use now are a Faisan Compact. These are the world's lightest trekking poles. Made in Italy. And they've got an interesting locking system. You just twist and it tightens. So far I've been really impressed with these. So the first thing I do is stake out the two guy lines at the back. I've got about eight inches on there. But you can if you wanted, just stake it directly to the ground. But using the guy lines gives you a little bit of extra room and it also helps with ventilation. So next up, I'm gonna set my trekking pole. It's about 120 centimeters. I'm gonna put the point end through this little loop. I'm gonna put my spear guy line over the end. And then I'm just going to stake out the front. Only needs to be roughly for now. Just going to even out these back bits a little bit. Just to make it level. So next up I'm going to tighten up these side ones. Pull them out. You don't need full tension yet. I'll do the same on the other side. And then just add some tension to these front corners. Let's give the shelter that bit of structure. Already that's starting to look something like. It's then just a case of going around and tidying things up a little bit. And also now add a bit of tension to this one at the back. And then I'm going to go around, just tighten things up a little bit. So these little bits here, you can either stake them out, or you can tuck them inside and you can use it as a dry shelf to put some gear on. I'm going to stake them out today. So 
So that's the tarp shelter done. You can actually just sleep under there if you want. There's plenty of room. I've brought with me a polychrome sheet. Keep me dry. But as you can see, there's enough room to sleep just under the tarp like this if you wanted to. But I don't like creepy crawlies, hence the reason I use a baby bag. Weather's changed, so it's getting a little bit warm now, so I've had to take the coat off. All right, let's show you the bivy that I use. So this is the Rab Unishelter Classic. This weighs in at 1140 grams, so it's not the lightest weight option. But with it being lower profile and the smaller footprint, you can get this pitched in places that you can't get a regular tent to fit. Pack size is quite large, but you can squash it down if you put it into a different pack. It does have a single pole, which I keep separate. That gives me more options for packing the bivy away, really. I'll get it set up away from the tarp to give you a better look around. But then I'll show you how I integrate it with this so I've got a better system you know, when the really bad weather comes in. So the bottom of the bivy is a heavy duty 200 denier nylon. That makes it very durable. And the top layer is a Tegvaltex breathable and weatherproof material. So far I found it to be very breathable and have no condensation issues. So the pole just fits through this sleeve. And locks into these little eyelets. That bit there needs to go onto the bottom. You can use the bivy without stakes, but it does work much better with a minimum of three. So I have one at either end of the pole. I'm also going to put one at the base. That lifts the foot end up and it gives you better ventilation inside really. All right, so there's the bivy set up. It's got a, like a metal wire in there, so that gives you a bit of a shelf when you open this up. It stops the rain getting in. It has a zip that goes halfway down to give you easier access. A thick storm flap with Velcro strips on it. Let's get this open and have a look inside. So there's plenty of room inside the bivy also has a no see and mesh so you can have the main part open when the weather's really nice normally getting in a bivy bag's hard work but it's much easier having this zip that goes all the way down so i'm gonna zip up the bug net i don't want to like get locked away inside in this heat So now I'm protected from all the critters, but I've still got the, the view of the stars at night. Plenty of room inside here, so you can actually fit your rucksack in the bottom. And there's also space around the head area here for your, your phone and other electronical items or anything that you need close to hand really. So the hooped area keeps everything off your face while you're asleep. Plenty of room in there look. I've put a couple of stakes in here, but once you've got your sleeping pad and everything in, you don't need those and it helps to remove them as it gives you a little bit more freedom, you know, to move your feet around in here. Mesh is really fine, so it should also be midge proof. Quality is just as good as the Ridge Raider, but I prefer the design where you can actually zip it halfway down as opposed to having to crawl in from one end. So I'll get the bivy put inside the tarp and show you how I use it when I'm out camping. All right, so I've now got the bivy set up inside the tarp. I can move this around so I can move it a little bit further over there for one or two. So I've done a little bit of tweaking. So now you can see that the head area 
is well protected by the tarp. So this means when the weather's really bad, I can actually get in here without getting all my gear wet. So it also means I've got somewhere to make a brew, cook my food away from the wind and rain. Obviously I'll be inside the bivvy with just the top bit open. So you're probably thinking that this is quite a big setup just for bivvy camping. And you're right, you can get tents that weigh less than this system. However, most of the time, I only really want to be using the bivvy. I don't want to have to set the tarp up because I'll be planning to take this shelter, you know, when the weather's a bit better. If I know it's going to be raining or blowing a hoolie, then I'll probably be taking one of the tents. But I always take a trekking pole with me now anyway, so for an extra 250 grams or something, you know, taking this tarp gives me, you know, so much more versatility. It's basically a three-in-one system where I've got a bivvy for low profile, stealthier camps. I've got a tarp if I just want to knock up a shelter to make a brew. And if a bit of unexpected rain comes along, I can knock this up around my bivvy, which will make the camping experience a little more comfortable. So if you want to see how well this system holds up to the wind and rain, check out this video up here. Let me know in the comments below if you use a tarp and bivvy. Especially be interested to know if anyone else has got one of these, because I've not seen many of them about, to be honest. But that's it for this one, so I'll see you next time.